Hello YouTube people, today I will start this review from the close-up shot because this watch is very beautiful and I have many things to show you up close and later on I will show you how this watch looks on a person from a distance with lots of different straps <laughs> so yeah I have a lot to show, a lot to say it's probably gonna be one of those long videos so pause the video, go make a cup of tea, grab some cookies, and let's have some fun. Let's start with some measurements. So zero in the calipers. Yeah. What's the thickness of the watch? The thickness is 11.4 millimeters, but it has dome sapphire crystal, and on the edge it's around 10 millimeters. The crown itself is 6 point something. Hold on a second. 6.7 millimeters lug width is 20 millimeters the distance lug to lug is around if i can get it right around 49.2 millimeters and the diameter of the watch if i measure from eight and a half pm to two and a half pm is around 41 millimeters well i wanted to show you how this balance wheel looks like when the watch is out of power and the balance wheel is completely stopped and stationary but I flipped the watch and it started going once again <laughs> so that's how it looks like when it's basically completely out of power out of juice and it still barely runs so this uh, balance wheel is not moving full rotation it's, it's almost stopped okay while I'm waiting for this movement to stop completely let's talk about the looks of this movement well this movement looks really interesting very intriguing but i wouldn't call it beautiful you see there are two problems one is probably very subjective and another is objective subjective problem is these uh, are these engravings this star in the middle i don't really mind those engravings over the edge but this star engraving in the center it kind of cheapens the look of the watch it doesn't play out with anything on this movement, it doesn't look cohesive, it doesn't add anything. And in, in my opinion, this star engraving in the middle just cheapens the look. I believe it would look a lot better without it. And another thing which is probably more objective than subjective uh, is this black paint on this edge and slow, fast this this little ruler and it looks nasty it looks like i did it did it myself let me zoom in a little bit so, so you can take a better look i mean it's a little bit off <laughs> also if they can make such a fine engravings as a little star on the center why haven't they made this engraved without black paint it would look so much better but yeah it, it does look a little bit cheaper <laughs> with the black paint and i can't really tell but it looks like there is some engraving under the black paint so they painted over the engraving which is a shame which is a shame so yeah that's that's my take on the looks of the moment anyway i just love looking at it either way i don't like engravings don't like black paint but I just look at this movement and I'm like so, like a little kid. It's so interesting. It's so intriguing. Yeah, so it's about to stop any moment. It's like looking at a watch movement at slow motion. Oh, it stopped. Yeah, <laughs> I got it on camera. So yes, you get to look at this movement, at this balance wheel how it looks like completely stationary stop i mean i find this fascinating i love looking at it i want to put the microphone next to the watch so i can record the winding up sound and i'll show you one thing uh, i watched a youtube video about this movement and the problem of this movement is that this cog has a little bit of free play and the problem is that because of that free play of low to tolerances it wears out throughout the time and the crown starts slipping and that's why you should be rather careful winding up this watch okay let's wind the watch
No, I don't normally wind like this. I usually wind like this. I did this in the previous video just because I wanted to record that sound. And look at this cog. Look at the back plate. See how much of a plate it has? That's why it wears out throughout the time. So that's why you have to be a little bit cautious winding this watch up. Don't just slam it. Be a little bit mindful. And it may last a little bit longer. <laughs> So the watch is fully wound, let's check it ac its accuracy using a phone app. So plus 5 seconds and 0 0.9 beat error. Let's flip it upside down and let's see what we're gonna get, is it any different? So yeah, once again, plus 4, plus 5 seconds and beat error 1 millisecond. Yes, not the most accurate measuring tool, but I'm very happy with the results. So I have showed you the movement up close. Now it's time to show you the dial. How is the dial? Well, it's a very beautiful dial. I'm not sure about those blue hands though. I believe it would look a lot better with just fully black hands. And these blue hands just somehow cheapen the look in my opinion, but that's, that is just my opinion. Either way, it looks really, really beautiful, this dial. And speaking about the white paint, it doesn't look like it has any lacquer on top. It looks like there is just a thin layer of white paint on glossy finish metal piece. And it doesn't look cheap, it looks alright. It looks alright. But it's not some kind of a lacquer finish. It's 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 shiny, but it's shiny as metal is shiny in that way. And speaking about, about the color, this white paint has a little bit of a antique shade, I would say, like it's aged a little bit. For example, I don't know if it if the camera will pick that up, but this Casio has completely white dial. It's as white as it can get, and this big watch has a little bit of a yellowish kind of brownish shade at some angles that's may maybe that's because of a sapphire crystal i'm not sure also the sapphire crystal has blue anti -reflect reflective coating as you can see so yeah maybe that's because of sapphire crystal but i'm, I'm not saying that in a negative way that it has some kind of a shade i think it fits the character of this watch very well it looks like it's aged a little bit. I'm just pointing out the fact how it looks like. Also, look at the insert of a second's hand. It has this little crest. It looks so nice. And I'm not sure if camera gonna pick that up, but those black numbers, they are printed in a very thick way. I can see the thickness of this black paint with my naked eye, I mean it does look premium, <laughs> it does look expensive, it's, it's very nicely finished. Hello YouTube people once again, <laughs> let's do this little fashion show where I'm gonna show you this watch on many different strap options, but before I begin I'll tell you one thing, the area of this watch that touches the wrist is rather large and very flat. Well, because of that, the watch feels very stable, very secure, and it feels a lot smaller than it actually is. But the negative thing of that is that uh, the wrist gets warm and sweaty in that place. And you see, this is a, a big area that actually sits on the wrist, and it's very unbreathable. That's why I prefer wearing this watch on some kind of single piece straps, so that the watch sits actually on some kind of a stri uh, on, on a strap and it feels a lot better that, that way. And this is original strap that this watch comes with. It's um, 
it's not that bad it's not that bad it's a little bit like a, a, a plastic leather you know what i'm talking about but it's actually flexible and doesn't feel that bad i i, I doubt about its durability but i mean i <laughs> i didn't buy this watch because of this strap obviously <laughs> anyway can't tell bad things about the strap buckle everything looks fine yeah this color may be enough for everyone but you know what let's actually swap swap <laughs> to the black one let's see how it looks like and this is the black leather strap looks nice i kind of prefer it better than the red one so while i i keep showing you different strap options and showing you this watch from the distance i want to tell you the story why i have why have i bought it what research have i done about this watch etc etc so there is something to talk about also let me zoom in because with this wide angle you don't see through perspective how the watch looks like my wrist size is 16.5 centimeters and now it doesn't feel too big does it look too big well we're gonna talk about that a little bit later and this is just black silicone strap so why have i bought this watch i never had mechanical non-automatic watch so i was looking on aliexpress and this watch instantly got my attention because it looks like nothing else it looks very interesting it looks very antique well to be honest i can't really tell a story while changing straps i'll just sit down and tell you how it is so i wanted mechanical watch non-automatic and this one popped out on aliexpress as it looks really beautiful but it has no logo so i was afraid that this could be some kind of a fake watch because it could could happen on aliexpress we all know that and i couldn't do a review on such watch it's it's dangerous my channel could be deleted if by mistake this could be some kind of a fake watch so i did my research on google using google imaging search etc etc ended up learning quite a bit about horology of about watches how pocket watches were converted into wrist watches and why when it's like it's, it was fascinating it's about first world war and uh, how soldiers were converting pocket watches into wrist watches and you see this watch has a pocket watch movement so it kind of is a homage to that era because using google images images search and all kinds of search i have found multiple watches from that era from the first world war to the second world war there are multiple very famous brands making this kind of design it was just the design of that era and all those brands were making just tiny differences between there are only tiny differences between different brands some may use uh, roman numerals some arabic numerals uh, hands may be a little bit different it's like uh, tiny differences and they all were like copies of each other so i haven't found exact watch that this watch would copy so i would say that this watch is just a homage to that era from the first world war to the second world war and i would say it's actually very cool and the reason it also the reason that it has a pocket watch movement it makes makes it super cool i mean i speaking about the size i always say that this kind of design you know dress style watch being this big is like a dinner plate watch it's like a fashion watch but the reason that it's a homage to that era of watches that it has the movement of which resembles that era as well it's like super cool it gets a pass from me this size it gets a pass from me. It, it can't even get smaller than that because the movement wouldn't fit inside i find i find it fascinating i never cared about horology or things like that but this watch made me watch a lot of youtube videos about pocket watches about trench watches about all those things it's like i find it fascinating so this watch actually uh made me interested into horology <laughs> so interesting thing 
I really hope I'm not mistaken. If you know exact watch that this watch copies or, or makes a homage of, let me know in the comments. But it has to be exactly the same hands, same font, everything the same. If you know famous brand that makes this kind of a watch, please tell me in the comments. Because I could be wrong. I'm no expert. <laughs> I'm no collector. I just buy watches and have fun. So how is it? How is it to own mechanical non-automatic watch? How does it feel like? Is it a chore to wind this watch up? Is it difficult to remember that you have to wind your watch up? Uh, let me put it this way. For example, this is quartz watch, right? It's something like family car. Family car with automatic gearbox. It's super convenient, comfortable family car. And this Invicta Pro Diver with automatic movement is something like Chevrolet Corvette or Ford Mustang. Very powerful, fast car with automatic gearbox. I mean, what's the point? Why, why would even, why would anyone would even buy something like that? A fast, sporty car with automatic gearbox. I will probably never understand such things. But this watch is the same Chevrolet Corvette. It's, it's the same Ford Mustang, but the proper mechanical gearbox <laughs> with three pedals. That's how it feels like. That's the analogy I could make to this watch. If you never had mechanical watch, fully mechanical, non-automatic watch, it's a must try. If you like these automatic movements, oh my god, you're gonna love this thing. You're gonna love a watch with mechanical movements so much. I mean, winding it up in the morning, it's like something... People look for the next morning so they can get a cup of coffee, a morning cup of coffee, so they look forward for the, for the next morning. Me, <laughs> I look for the next morning so I can wake up and wind my watch once again. And I don't wind it too much, so I can wind it again once again next morning. <laughs> That's how it feels like. It's wonderful. It's amazing. I look forward winding this watch again and again. It's like some kind of a fidget toy, which you like clicking constantly or spinning constantly. It's, it feels that way. It's just a pleasure to do that. It's amazing. You might have a question right now. Why I even buy those automatic watches? if that's my opinion about them well you see the problem is that for example i want something like this yeah the sapphire crystal with ceramic bezel and i want quartz movement there are no such things really there aren't really many quartz nice watches to choose if i want something like this and there are several things you see if I buy something like this for a review, after all the planned videos are done, I have to sell this watch eventually. And good luck selling something like this with a quartz movement if it doesn't have a, a Casio name on it. You're gonna lose a lot of money. But this one with automatic movement, no problem selling it, especially with Seiko, Seiko movement. So yeah, two reasons. Can't really find any nice quartz watches. And it's very difficult to sell a quartz watch that doesn't have a Casio name on it. Uh, other than that, if I would be buying just for myself, right now I have this opinion. It's either quartz, uh, very accurate, reliable, super good, or completely mechanical, hand-windable, non-automatic, like this. I don't care about accuracy of this watch. I just enjoy the, the movement itself. Like with automatic watches, I do care about accuracy and it kind of bothers me if it goes too fast or too slow. It's annoying. I want quartz. But with this one, somehow it doesn't bother me. Also, as you saw in the beginning of the video, this movement is rather fragile, especially winding up cog. So winding it up fully is not really healthy for this watch. Because the more you wind it, the, the, the more difficult it gets, the more friction it gets, and the more it wears out. So winding it up just halfway or even less will make this watch live a lot longer, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how I preserve this movement. 
if I decide to keep this watch, at least at least it's gonna live a lot longer than it would if I would wind it up all the way, all the time. I would like to mention one more thing about this watch. You see big movement, big parts, it does make a big noise, a very loud ticking noise of this watch. Me personally, I hate ticking noise of quartz watches. I just can't wear them. I just, nope, that doesn't get passed from me. But this, however, mechanical ticking is a lot more frequent. And somehow I find it pleasing. When it's on my wrist, it doesn't annoy me. When it's on the table, I can't stand it. I have to put it somewhere else where I couldn't hear it. And my wife also hates this watch. She hates, she hates this ticking noise. Why it's so loud? Why it's so annoying? I could even compare this watch with a car with a sports exhaust. Uh, it could be a headache, but sometimes it's a lot of fun. So that's how it sounds, like a sports exhaust on a car. <laughs> and this last strap is my favorite. It's tangible, single piece strap. It's very interesting. Look how it puts, how it gets on the wrist. Let's get it on the wrist. Then hook this up and tighten it up. So throughout the day, I can actually loosen it up, tighten it up. And because it, it's tangible, it's super comfortable. And I like how this metal hardware looks together with the watch. It kind of fits the team. I mean, oh my God, just look at this watch. So amazing. Okay, let me get back in front of the camera. <laughs> Okay, so the last strap, let's get to the conclusions. Well, probably <laughs> more than 90% of people have already clicked off the video because it's already too long. But the reason why I'm making this video the way I am making is that I'm actually making this video for myself, kinda. I'm really enjoying doing that. And let's be honest, it's not some kind of Pagani design, popular San Martin or Cadison, etc, etc, that many people would be constantly looking on the search on YouTube. I, I gonna get like initially probably 300 views, maybe 400 views if lucky. <laughs> and that's it. So basically there are no benefits for me uh, of making this video. I mean, I'm just, I'm just having fun. That's it. I'm just having fun. Nobody cares. Several hundred views, that's it, this video is gonna die out. I already know that. But I'm still making it, I'm still doing it because I just, I like this watch so much. And I really wanna tell everything about this watch and show everything. And I, I believe I did. <laughs> I believe I did. <laughs> anyway, so what's the end note? Where I gonna place this watch on my website, thomaswatchreviews.com, where I place watches into different tiers. It's definitely a keeper, definitely a keeper. Even though this movement is a little bit fragile, uh, it's still so much fun for the money, for under 100 euros. A big piece of sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, a piece of history on the wrist, kinda. You have to understand this is a piece of history on the wrist. It's like, I love it, I love it. It's a wonderful watch, definitely a good keeper. Anyway, if any, any of you <laughs> are still watching, thank you. You are awesome. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.